Welcome to Sound Values, powered in part by LSA Burger and Classic of Denton. The views and opinions expressed by the show hosts and their guests are those of the show hosts and guests, and not necessarily those of the sponsors, DentonRadio.com, or the Denton Convention and Visitors Bureau. For more information, visit the Policies and Procedures page at DentonRadio.com. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in tonight on DentonRadio.com. We are broadcasting out of the beautiful Discover Denton Welcome Center on the ever gloomy today, kind of cold Denton Square. But there's a couple folks here who are going to bring the sunshine back to our lives. Here. Right. They're from the Mason Adams <laughs> right. Project. Woo! How are we doing, fellas? Introduce yourselves. Hello, everybody. My name's Jordan. This I is play jo- bass. Jordan plays bass. Hey, guys. Mason Adams of the Mason Adams <laughs> Project. The one and only. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Great to have you all on the show tonight. Appreciate you all. Thanks for having Thanks us. for coming out. We're happy to be here, man. That traffic on 35 North. It does not play. Uh, white knuckled the whole way. Oh, dude, I do not envy anybody that has to make that drive. I know, man. It makes you just want to stay wherever you're going for a little bit longer <laughs> do i really yeah, need, need i mean to, yeah. do i have do i have to go yeah. right now <laughs> yeah. yeah i remember I, uh years ago man there was a kid who was here from like up north and he was like i gotta ask you a question man he's like what's wrong with 35 <laughs> he's like you can be driving down 35 3 30 in the morning all of a sudden it's bumper right. to bumper where did all yeah. these people even come Crazy. from and it's like that the whole way from <laughs> one end of it to the <laughs> yeah, other the i knew it, i knew it was bad when i saw a billboard that was an apology from like the transit administration it was like 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 just wait, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> like, <laughs> just, it was like, come on, just be with They've been us working on that longer. since like before I was born. Yeah, I mean, they're never gonna be done. Yeah, it's with it's it. a never yeah. ending it's a never ending project, <laughs> yeah. you know, pun included, you know, yeah. right there. But we made it. Um, I know we you're did, here. We, we narrowly yeah, exactly. escaped. It's, it's, you rode through the glorious golden gates to Denton. We played uh, the, the license plate game. This. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great game. A little padiddle. You know how it goes. Um, all right, fellas, let's jump right into it because, once again, February has been a month of uh, m- musicians whose music I know, who I've met before, but I don't know a whole lot about, you know, so I'm really getting kind of down to the nitty gritty, almost back to like one of kind of the original format of the show when it started three years ago. Is really getting to know you guys as mus- musicians, but also beyond the music as well. So um, let's kind of start um, right, at, right at the beginning. And I want I want to kind of know. Uh, we'll start with we'll start with Mason of the Mason Adams Project, and and kind of see how did this project begin? How did how did it turn into something? <laughs> yeah. Um, how much is, time do this you is, have? This is yeah. <laughs> this is pretty wild. Um, uh, I started playing the drums when I was a kid. Okay. Okay, like 10 years old, mm-hmm. um, and played drums for a while, and was a pretty good like 10 year old drummer. And then kind of when I started playing sports and being more involved in school activities, kind of more music kind of went to the side. Okay. I played varsity sports and all that Mm -hmm. type stuff. Um, So then whenever I went to college, um, I was a rapper. Okay. Um, And everybody in my family has always played instruments for the most part. Mm -hmm. And I was always kind of like the drummer that maybe tried to play an instrument, never kind of got there type of thing Mm -hmm. so i was gonna be a rapper and i could write really good yeah you know and so we did that thing and we recorded songs and we released mixtapes and we did shows at um small venues in kansas and college towns and stuff and yeah it was it was a good time um fast forward um five years Mm -hmm. graduated college yeah and i find myself with a little bit extra time on my hands <laughs> and it was actually March 1st, 2015. I was like, I'm going to learn how to play this guitar. Okay. So on March 1st, 2015, date, it's it. almost, it. it's almost been five years. That's yeah. I remember. Yeah. So I uh, started playing guitar, put together some songs, you know, share them with friends and family and those mm-hmm. type of things. Um, and then ultimately had decided that I was good enough with these songs that I can maybe go out and play them places. So I actually played my first ever show built under Mason Adams project at Midway. Nice. <laughs> in the beer store. Right? Nice, that was yeah. the very first one. And that was in November of 2017. Okay. So then um, I'm thinking, well, I need to start finding band members. And this guy shows up one day, had moved from Austin 
back up to Dallas and he's just really called to hang out. And I think my first question was like, don't you play bass? And and he was like, yeah, 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 I do. And I I was like, I need a bass player. (laughs) And so we jammed one night and then Jordan's just been the bass player. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. One of my favorite <laughs> favorite comments we've ever had on this show, and I know Jake will remember it, is when I asked this guy, Liam, I was like, Liam, so why'd you start playing bass in the band? And he was like, I had a bass. So I just <laughs> figured I'd play it in the band. <laughs> like, Step one is having a bass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. we laughed so hard about that for a long That's time. Good. Every time I see that kid out and about him, I, you got that bass? He's like, yeah, <laughs> still got that bass, man. Yeah. So, And then uh, our mandolin player, Kevin Cray Chin. Yeah, who we'll um, hear on the tracks yeah, who tonight. Who you're going to get to hear. Uh, me and that guy, we've been friends for about 25 years oh wow so we okay. go way back grew nice. up together graduated high school together and kevin has always played music um, okay you very know, cool. since we were in high school started playing guitar and and then eventually picked up mandolin yeah and, i feel like mandolin is when you're like well i've gotten really good at this let's make it harder exactly and smaller. Y- yeah. right <laughs> yeah right so you know when i'm learning teaching myself how to play guitar now i'm like having kevin come over and we're jamming together you know and he's playing mandolin and so it kind of got to a point where it was like kevin knows these songs these songs need this mandolin on them yeah and i'm like you know Kevin has been in some other bluegrass bands and stuff, you know, but I didn't have to beg him Mm -hmm. to be in the band. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) But I kind of put myself out there a little bit. Yeah, just figured why not. Yeah, why not? And ultimately, Kevin, I mean, one of the nicest things anybody ever said to me, he was like, Mason, he was like, I feel like you're writing mature music. And he was like, if I didn't like the music, I wouldn't play it with you. Yeah, yeah. And so he was like, sure, like, Mm -hmm. I'll be in the band. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah. And we recycled to a, a lead guitar player within the first month, month and a half. We played one show with him. Um, and But Jordan ultimately had known Peter, our drummer, Peter Lyman. And they had gone him to school. Him and I worked uh, yeah. at a restaurant together in San Marcos. Okay, nice. At a saltgrass steakhouse okay. on, the, on the falls. If you've Very cool, yeah. You worked at Texas, or you went to Texas State? I didn't. I just okay. I, I lived there because I was I was <laughs> I just you know it's a cool place and to partied. be. <laughs> I didn't go to I didn't go to UT, but I spent many nights in the Jester Dormitory myself. It I, yeah. Really, what happened was I was trying to live in Austin, and yeah. like, I had a year's worth of rent <laughs> ready to go. Like here's a year's worth of rent. Thank you very much. That's the last we're ever gonna have to talk to each other. Nope, sorry, you don't have a job in Austin. <laughs> I can't rent to you. And it's like, are you serious? Oh, like we're man. done. This is the end of the transaction. Oh. So I found a place in San Marcos that would let me live there for six months you know yeah. and like at the end of that i had to show that i had a job and like, okay get it yeah but like you know just I, I was done living in dallas didn't want to live there anymore for a while i wanted to try for out sure. austin and that's what it took to get there i had okay. to i had to you know camp outside for a little while before i could actually <laughs> you gotta sneak in when they're not looking <laughs> you know? work at the you, salt you gotta right. sneak that's, in that's, when that's how it happened it's so I, that's how i met peter and then him and uh, Peter knew the guitar player Gil because they went to undergraduate school together yeah. in San Marcos, and both of them were just living in Dallas at the time. And so your pain in the rear experience benefits Mason Adams. Totally, about, dude. About pain <laughs> in totally. the rear experience like, is like I'm like not exactly how I put me. living in completely San Marcos. San Marcos is one of the coolest places in and Texas. Peter yeah, and Peter and Gil yeah. had played music together yeah. down there. Yeah, you know they had been in bands down there yeah. together. Mm-hmm. You know, so they already had that kind of relationship, and so yeah. everybody has kind of known each other for years, even though we haven't yeah. even been a thing for. Oh, we're about two years. At that point, you know? like everybody's <laughs> played their instruments for probably fifteen to twenty years. Mm-hmm. Mason's been writing music for you know probably ten to fifteen years, mm-hmm. and so like the whole band just kind of came together really naturally, kind of accidentally. You That's know? awesome, it's though. Just, you know, isn't that this great is, to find some yeah. people who know what they're doing? And we doing can all sing, so there's four part harmonies. Dude, and, and, and to awesome. have three other yeah. guys that want to sing harmonies with you, yeah. like that doesn't happen. Those are fun to listen to. That too. doesn't happen. We're trying. You know. I, I can't. Well, I can't. <laughs> like, you, you know, I, you know, and I just was talking to L25, and anybody who sings, I can't do it. Like, it's just not a part of my musical capabilities you know like, but you freestyle great and yeah you, and you you can rap a little bit yeah, yeah yeah i can rap a little bit man I, ha- I have fun with that stuff so i've done that for years you know i was always just for fun yeah you know driving in the car rapping and stuff like that yeah and that's what it ought to be about yeah you know? and I always, <laughs> you know. yeah i always like you know i liked hip-hop music growing up i liked you know the beats and stuff you know atmosphere was a huge yeah. influence and then you know i mean but even you know even 
you, you know, a kid in the suburbs, I was still listening to Biggie and Tupac and Bone Thugs and Harmony and all totally. that For stuff. Sure. So, you know, but what that helps to do is it just kind of helps to develop like a style of flow that you want to use. Man, and it's and your it, style, you yeah. know, at that point. It yeah. really, and I'm telling somebody this the other day, it's, you know, I went from writing rap songs to whatever kind of songs we're playing now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, but whenever I, the more songs that I write and I can start looking at my writing structure and stuff, mm -hmm. like if, I feel like if somebody were to show me lyrics or something, I'd be like, I wrote that. Right? Because <laughs> I, you can tell your flow, yeah. your style, you know, the mm -hmm. way you switch things up or the, you know, the way things yeah. come back around in a song sometimes, yeah. you know? Definitely. Um, yeah. I'm starting to notice more and more that kind of my, I feel like my writing style is kind of kind of coming to mm -hmm. light a little bit more too what, what yeah. was one of the first or what was the first you know you guys start <laughs> practicing but when yeah. did you guys first play together as a band um oh. it's uh off the floor and then i think she no well, lessons she's talking about lessons. our first show right oh. yeah yeah Where? so our, yeah our, our first show was in march of 2018 okay and it was at the barley house and yes. we actually opened for try more mojo nice yeah gotta, gotta love those guys. yeah so gotta that was our very dudes. first show and they called us up and leland hit me up and was like hey man he was like do you guys want to open this show for us? We're thinking, well, we've only been practicing these songs for about a month, but we can probably do it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And that was, I mean, that was the first show. That's that awesome. Man. You gotta, yeah. you gotta love Mojo, man. Uh, you know, Leland, those guys have been on the show a couple of times. Love those guys, man. I've done. They are know, awesome. Yeah. Played, good played with them a lot. Yeah. You know, I've seen you. Yeah. Open yeah, yeah. Yeah. Open for those guys uh -huh. before. And, you know, getting to you know they're doing all that crazy tour stuff all over mm -hmm. the place you know Killing that's it. what's just been cool man is to know leland beyond you know all that music and know like the hustle and everything Dude, i met leland takes. in 2011 yeah. yeah shout out leland really? that's you awesome. know what i mean yeah that's and way before i met him i didn't meet him till probably i've probably known leland for two three years? I Leland, think three years leland was a rapper when i met him yeah yeah <laughs> no no wonder he's no wonder he is is cool to me he's nice yeah. to me you know <laughs> um but yeah, man, those 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 guys are awesome. So that's cool. You open for those guys, to, to start, and especially if you're gonna open for anybody, you know, yeah. you couldn't find a nicer group of fellows. Oh, I, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, um, we thought it was awesome to get the call. Yeah, know? man. So so that's what's up. So how did y'all feel after that performance? I mean, I, I think we were hopeful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we were hopeful. I think yeah. we felt like we had a long, long way to go. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But we had played a show. And yeah. it was fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, it, and it was fun, mm -hmm. and we executed. Yeah. You know, I mean, we got through the whole set, and nobody stopped during a song or anything like that. You know, yeah. there wasn't any major mess-ups. But, yeah. man, we were I, – I listened to some of that old stuff. I call it old. <laughs> yeah. Two years ago. Two years ago, that old you know, stuff. I listened to some of that, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, <laughs> we were so yeah. rough around the edges, you man. know? Well, I know what you mean by that. You know, I'll go back, and there's a few songs that I'll still play in my sets that are mine, like where I'm just like, I don't know what I did that day, but I did something right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, there's one song specifically that I'll play, and I do remember I was in a very bad place. I just had, had my heart broken at the time. It was many years ago. And uh, I said, I'm going to make something that's exactly the opposite of the way I feel. And it was this very, very happy, very upbeat song. Um, and I'll, I'll still play it to this day because it still sounds sounds still good, good but I know what you mean. Yeah. We even, just with L25, with that interview, she was like, oh, I'll go back and listen to stuff from a while back. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. But that's what's, that's what's great is that you're getting better. For it's sure. You're always getting better. And if you keep going, it's kind of like, man, you know, I, you know, according to the time frame, should have about 30, 40, maybe even 50 more years of this thing. And who knows where I could get in that amount of time? Right. Like, that could be, you know, who knows where technology is going to go? Who knows how good music is going to be able to sound at that point? Like, how much, how crisp well, can things get? I mean, get? it's, it's kind of wild because we all have full-time jobs, mm -hmm. you know, yep. and, you know, things going on and we're old now, you yeah. know, <laughs> just <laughs> how I feel, yeah. you know, and yeah, I mean, it would have been a lot easier to like try to start a band when you're like 16 years old, when yeah. you don't have responsibilities and things going on mm -hmm. and all these things, you know, and so ultimately, I mean, truth be told, we spend about four hours a week together. Nice. You know, that's a good amount as a band though. It is. For sure. We, we have our night and we have, you know, when we go in there, we're working. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right. We're not messing around at all. We're working. Yeah, and it helps that everybody's been playing music, like you said, 15, 20 years. Dude, you know, these that allows guys. Us to just come in and chop away. I tell them all the time. One take jigs. They, they make my songs sound way better than ever I could have imagined. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was like, it's unreal. And they make me like my songs better than and maybe when I And getting kind of like, it. you know, 
past a year into it, we started recording the first um, EP that we had. That mm-hmm. was kind of groundbreaking as far as everybody like when we all played together we all listened to each other and that kind of thing but that was when we really started listening to each other okay when we started recording and like that's what i sound like oh my goodness yeah. let's, <laughs> listen, let's listen and yeah and exactly i was like, just about to say this is everything such a great... just started evolving and getting so much better yeah, since i was then. like that's a perfect segue all right so right here <laughs> we've got the mason adams project we're live with them right now on dittonradio.com and this is their track through the darkness right here and so who's this on the mandolin right now? That is Kevin. Okay. This is definitely one of those songs that when I wrote it, it's just a basic three chord thing, you know? And it's one of those songs when I wrote it, I like the tune, you know, but then bringing it to these guys. It, yeah. It, and, and before I played with Mason, I never walked. I never walked on the bass. Yeah. And that's like, yeah, cause I, you I do love right it. Here. You have that one right at the yeah. beginning. That's, it's it, it's yeah. good. And I, it sounds so good. Yeah. And. Yeah, see, like I said yesterday, you know, the head through the, like, driving to the sunshine yesterday with this was just so perfect. Makes you smile a little bit. Yeah, Yeah. you know, it's not legal, but I needed a drink at the time. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's hard to feel bad listening to this song. Exactly. You know, um, so, you know, kind of like, you know... It reminds me of like an Irish jig. Yeah, you know, know, it's, it's a very, it's, it's happy, it's upbeat, and so... Uh, you know, when when you're working on writing a song like this, or do you sit down and just kind of start writing? What's what's the process for you? Well, so you know, as a rapper or something, I felt like I, you, w- you would always find the beat first most of the time. Yeah. For me, mm-hmm. I, I was never wrote a bunch of lyrics down and then try to find the beat to go with the lyrics oh, type deal at all. Yeah. I, it was so hard, right? Yeah. And now, I mean, it can go both ways. Most of these are all written sitting on my couch, mm-hmm. you know, on the acoustic guitar, you know, and then you know grow into these these songs it's like whoa like mind blown do you find like because of your kind of background with hip-hop is it kind of like you just kind of sit and play in freestyle in a way a little you, bit yeah absolutely until, until, until i something. maybe find some freestyle playing guitar until yeah. i find something yeah, yeah. a little just freestyle hear things you know see something you know and catch that first line of the chorus or yeah. something you know and then start working from yeah. that yeah i love that that mandolin section that we just had right there he crushes yeah. and, and that's what's so great about <laughs> really the mandolin good. is that mandolin you know it really pushes through in a mix yeah and it just brings a song to life what's neat about the mandolin is it 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 gives some room for the guitar the guitar isn't just the high voice anymore exactly. there's something above the guitar and so the guitar has so much more the way it breathes yeah exactly in a, in a mix it's it's really it's really great you know and I like in the mix too, like you know, it's all y'all singing, and it's a little bit more back in the mix in a way. It it makes it it has that homey feel to it, you know. Yes. It's not, um, and I mean this in a really good way. It's not overproduced. No, absolutely. Yeah. You know what I mean, all the tracking we did in in our lead guitar player's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah all the tracking. And then mm-hmm. took that into a studio, and then had everything. We did vocals. Then. We had it mixed there, mm-hmm. um, actually at the Epic Studios in Grand Prairie. And nice. then and then we um, sent those tracks to King Electric in Austin for the mastering. Nice. And and that's that's what we came up with. And yeah. tell you, I mean, we, we spent it was a, a lot of we, fun. We spent a little money on it. You there know you what I mean? But it, it, it was it wasn't that much. Yeah. It, and, and, yeah. And we had a lot of fun doing it. And, and learned a lot. The EP is called Lessons. Yeah. And we learned so <laughs> many so, lessons. Oh, yeah. There's a band I've had on before called Flintlock Gypsy, and they, uh, they're, I've, I've heard of them. Yeah, their guy, their their lead guy, Michael Zane Roser, he built their studio and like built the mics. That's so like, awesome. Bought stuff and built it all together. <laughs> and he was great. like, it was a terrible experience, but I'm so glad I did it. You know, um, he's like, I'm glad I, I learned all those things and put it all together. But my gosh, I'll never do it again. You yeah, know, he's like, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, we don't learned so it. much. We learned mm-hmm. so much off that one, man. I just and uh, newsflash, we're going back to the studio. There you go. Um, yeah. in April probably, mm-hmm. and we're hoping to have at least a couple of things to release by yeah. maybe like May, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah, man. See, I, I, you know, that's the kind of music where you got, you know, playing at a brewery outdoors when it's a nice day out, you know, down at Harvest House when it's nice night out, something like that. Plug. Um, yep. Harvest uh, House. Yeah, you know, uh, something like that. I feel like, you know, but that's the honest truth, you know, is that it makes sense in those spaces. Like I could hear you guys uh, playing with um, – Oh man, um, I might ha- I might have to go to 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 Jake to help me out on this uh, Buffalo, um, 
Buffalo Ruckus. Ruckus. Yeah, if you guys have never heard of I, Buffalo I Ruckus, I have heard the name. Look Buffalo those guys Ruckus. up. I think those will be a great guy, somebody for y'all to. Cool. They've played. They've played at LSA. There's a mandolin in the band. Cool. Um, you guys both have beards. <laughs> you know, uh, so I, I think, and they're they're Good awesome, man. They're super fun to listen so to. So to be completely honest with you, I felt like in a way, in a sense, we kind of had um, identity crisis for a little while. Okay. And it was kind of trying to figure out just who can we play with, you know, who we would be a good pairing with. And that we I mean, now, I mean, we kind of, we've kind of got a toolbox and a bunch of guys that we've played with and stuff, you know, and, but we're still, I mean, now I feel like we have, we have our sound Mm -hmm. at this point, we have our sound Mm -hmm. two years and we, we we all know where we're trying to go and what we're trying to do. And we trust each other. Yeah. 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 And and so we, I feel like we found our sound. I feel like our sound is extremely unique. Mm-hmm. Right, and our live shows are really wild too because you're gonna get a little rock and roll, you're yeah. gonna get a little funk, you're gonna get a little bluegrass, mm-hmm. you're gonna get a little bit of soul. I might rap for you, yeah, you know what I mean. And that's like when I came through the door, I told Jake, I was like, Hey, you know, these guys tonight, I described it to him as uh, it was uh, hillbilly hippie funk, you know, and I, then I was fair like, enough. I, was like I love that with bluegrass, and I was like, and I mean hillbilly in a very positive manner you know yeah, but that's yeah, where the mandolin no came from taken. but the bass lines in those tracks kind of had a bit more of a funk feel with the way you were walking it you know um but then the the singing you know like i said the, the way that the vocals are mixed is a very homey feeling and i love that about those about the mixes um you know but the guitar is kind of rock and that's what's so great about the differential between that heavier guitar with the mandolin over the top of it and the mix like that i really exactly. like the way that feels exactly. thank you yeah. thank yes. you yeah, <laughs> yeah. thank yeah. you so that's how i felt about that man um let's go ahead let's uh we've got another track here too that you know we can jump on into yeah. this right here is called take your smile um uh, you know this is more of our hippie hollow. This one. is this is kind of I mean uh, I mean not really reggae, but this is kind of our sublime song. Yeah, a little bit. I can feel that right when you say that, you know, especially you know once again with the bass line and the guitar, you know, and the songs just kind of morph themselves into what they are. Yeah. The li- yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely got a sublime vibe to it, man, for sure. It's it's a nice, <coughs> you know. And it's almost, it's almost kind of got that little electronic feel with the mandolin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and I never, I didn't even, even forming this project, I never thought, I don't even know what I was thinking. Yeah. But I didn't think I was going to be a lead singer, even though I was writing the songs yeah. and stuff. And it, it literally took several practices for these guys to be like, you're going to be the singer. You're singing all these songs. You need to work on being a better singer. You know, <laughs> like seriously. And then, I mean, because I sang as a kid younger, you know, like in choir, mm-hmm. church choir and stuff yeah. like that. And then, but, you know, growing up and puberty and all those things. And people would have told you that I might have been tone deaf yeah. at times, you know? Mm-hmm. But, you know, playing the guitar and listening and feeling all those tones and everything being so close. And then having people around you push you to be a better singer. You yeah. Know? I, I mean, I even had an argument where I was like, I'm not a singer. And, <laughs> and our drummer, Peter's like, you've been paid for your singing performance. He's like, <laughs> you're, a, you're a singer. You're a professional <laughs> singer. You're a singer now. Yeah. I'm sorry. To the yeah. I like it. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying. Yeah. Well, a buddy <laughs> of mine, um, Brian, Brian Burns, he, um, he went, he used to play in, punk bands and all that stuff we were in high school and that wasn't about your vocal performance and as we got older he started singing a little bit more got a little bit better and then what was crazy for him is he went out on the road and he lived out of his truck and he traveled around with a um, solar powered generator that he built and he was playing on the streets and he was in Vegas playing a guy walked by him and said I want you to come try out for The Voice so he made it through a couple rounds of The Voice uh, to the point where he actually had his family fly out and stuff like that. Wow. Um, and uh, Blake Shelton was like, you know, it's just good to have down old homeboy here. That's you awesome. Know? And Christina Aguilera was like, just because you have a beard doesn't mean you're going to win this competition. Um, but he was very similar to where he had to work on his voice, you know. And now, like, when he comes over, you know, if we're working on some music, we'll sit down and it – you know, it turns out completely different than the stuff that I normally make when it's just me. Yeah. But but that's what I what I like is that when he comes over, it's like, oh man, now I'm working on something completely different. I got to mix it differently. It's got to be totally different. But 
you know, I'll always tell him and Jared, I'm like, you guys are singing it. Like, I'll help write the lyrics, but I am not singing with y'all <laughs> at all. You know, yeah. it's just not going to happen. It's not yeah. my shtick. Uh, but good on you because it, it takes some gusto to get up there and do that, man. You know, but also having done some rap, that definitely helps. You know, because rappers, we have to be a little overconfident exactly. in order to do it at all. It's also, it's also a part of, you know, kind of that culture. Yeah. You know, of, yeah, of, of, hi of hip hop. And, you know, if you battle and all that kind of silly stuff. Yeah. So, and, and then, you know, it's, it's wild because, you know, it's not like it's not like I'm like well, I'm gonna go out and write these country songs, or yeah. I'm gonna go out and write bluegrass songs, or I'm gonna write a funk tune, or you know, I mean, I don't really set out to do those type mm -hmm. of things. But I think those are all of our songs. As, <laughs> as it started off, we, yeah. we set out to be a jam band. I mean, we were and gonna be we kind writing, of a jam like, band. The, yeah. the, the, the lyrics just kind of played into being these are songs, you know, yeah. these are radio <laughs> songs, gentlemen. And we're writing songs. We're yeah. holy. Yeah. <laughs> so and just kind of kept on evolving and Please. just you know the the songs really like the songs we wrote a year ago compared to the songs we're writing now. Mm -hmm. The songs we're writing now they're they're a lot more I guess technical or um, what more thought out and uh, structured. The composition and the, yeah. and the arrangements and yeah. all that. I mean it's it's wild. Everybody's growing. Everybody's yeah. growing in the band and it's it's even you know like Gil. You know I mean he was a great guitar player when he when we started playing with him two years ago and yeah. he could shred two years ago but just on the way up here we were listening to one of his solos and i was like oh my yeah. god <laughs> gil right. well you know? if you do the math four hours a week for two years at 52 weeks is 416 hours that you spent <laughs> you know so you that's know? how long it takes that's to be pretty good. cool yeah you know, it's so cool yeah yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna do this math real quick. That's um, pretty cool. Yeah, so that that's a long time to work and write and play. But that's what I mean is to spend that much time around each other means that you work very well together as a band. You know, living up in Denton, you see a lot of bands come and go. You see a lot of band members who will come and go. People move, you know, but to – and maybe in a way, this is where being a little bit older and more established yeah. can work out later on because it's not like somebody's like, hey, man, um, I'm, I'm going to go to Brooklyn and play in the jazz clubs up there for right. a while. I'll be back, you know. And to that point, you know, we're all very different people. You know, mm -hmm. Mason's a, a school teacher. I, I work in insurance um, – um, you know, we all have di very different professions from attorney, one to another. We have an attorney in the group. We have a master botanist in the group. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like very different walks of life, very different personalities. Mm -hmm. And like when we come in that room and start playing music together, it's like we all grew up on the same street together or something yeah. like that. It We're is. And, really good friends. and I will, I mean, be the first to credit everybody in the band. And I mean, it's it takes a lot to be able to drop your ego yeah, for sure. You know, and yeah. and be able to take criticism and and give constructive criticism. You mm -hmm. know, yeah, and, very important. And and you know, and and that's just been that's been another that's been our thing. Yeah, you know, is everybody just being able to leave it all at, at the door? Yeah, you know? yeah. I've said it many times on this show when people discuss the criticism is like one of my best friends, Jared. If it wasn't for him. I never would have made music that I w wanted to play in front of people because mm -hmm. that was always the goal is I need an hour of my own music that I can get up there and mix and play in front of people, you yeah. know? And, you know, if it wasn't for him being like, mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, that part, that was cool. Do more of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of that? Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That. yeah. Yes. So, I mean, and that's, yeah, it's just, it's been so awesome to, to, be a part of a team yeah. and everybody, you know, working towards common goals. Yeah, and stuff, exactly. You know? I mean, and then achieving those goals and then setting new goals yeah. and then just kind of keep yeah. on stepping up the ladder. Yeah, so that. you guys are going back in the studio. Or are you guys going to be playing a live show anytime soon? So that's, it's kind of been a tricky thing for us because we've got a couple of things that we're waiting on that we would <laughs> love to just shout to the high heavens. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we've got some pretty big spring announcements that are going to be rolling in yep um we're also going down to austin nice. um again we're going to play a show down there with oscar ornelas um in his band he is the 2019 blues artist of the year for austin texas wow that's impressive also that's um joe james who was a voice contestant I is know, also, yeah, i follow joy ja joe is, james it's yeah. also playing with us down there too where we're playing so awesome. we're playing at skull mechanics brewing that's nice. on saturday april 4th 4 okay. 4 20 so mark your calendars i think i have a no i'm april 7th i've got mark your calendars and we hope to Maybe see you all you austinites or anybody up, traveling man. to austin that weekend um 
And, um, yeah, I mean, beyond that, I mean, we're playing, we've got a cool private gig that we're playing. Nice, And man. it's it's on the rooftop of the Fairmont Hotel. Very in cool. In Dallas. Very cool, man. I'm yeah. really excited and about so, Those are fun. fun. So, and it's, it's going to be cool. It's going to be a semi-acoustic show. Basically, yeah. we're gonna play two mm-hmm. hours for this thing. Nice, yeah, yeah. And so right now we are working on that show. Yep. Um, trying to figure out. I mean, because we're changing some things, rearranging some things. Not can't play some songs. Some songs, you know, that maybe you wouldn't think we'd do an acoustic type deal. We are yeah. gonna do, and yeah. So we're kind of working on those type of things. We're also just been installing new music. I mean, we're doing three new songs simultaneously right now we added jordan's good buddy song um not your redemption recently and so this is what's going to be crazy i could ultimately probably write a whole set list maybe not a whole set list Mm -hmm. most of a set list for this show in austin that we're going to go play it could be completely different songs that people have (laughs) never even heard us play before okay is how i mean we're working on songs and and they're coming i mean i brag at gill the other night two nights ago i guess he was up late and i woke up the next morning get ready to go to work teach school and i had an email from gill and it was some lyrics and some chord changes, and he was like, I need a chorus. Okay. And so as soon as I read it, he had also played a little bit of it and sent me a recording. As soon as I heard it, it's like 5.45 in the morning yeah. or something, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. stand by, I got an idea. <laughs> and I just sent that email, you yeah. know? And then I go sit down, and I'm like, and I'm like, holy smokes. And then oh, I'm man. like, send it to him. You know, I'm super pumped, jazzed about it all day long, you know? And it's like 8 o'clock, and I'm like, hey, do you listen to that? And he's like, no, he's like, I'm gonna go back to sleep. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I'm having <laughs> my day, you know. And then it's like eleven o'clock. I'm like eleven a.m. I'm like yeah, anything, you know. And he's like, I haven't listened to it. Yet, a few you know? hours later. Yeah, finally, yeah. it's like four o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, well, <laughs> in a text message, you know. And he was like, oh yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Good one, you know. And I'm like, oh, you made me wait all day, oh, you know. <laughs> What's but that? Oh, it's cool awesome, that man. I mean we're collaborating more, you know. Like yeah, we've got this sure. one new song, you know. It's called Outlaw. Oh, that one's been stuck in my head like pretty much all week. It's going to be a good one. And what's cool about that is that I, that's one of those songs that I actually did write the lyrics for, but I didn't put the music to it. Gil did. Nice. (laughs) So that's great. So that's cool that we're having that sort of collaboration. Yeah, man. Those are always fun. I've, you know, I've only collaborated with a few people since I've been up here. I wish I'd been more or better at that, but I made a song one night that was, very, you know, it was a sadder sounding beat, and it's normally not how my music sounds at all. And Pudge Brewer, who's a, who's a fantastic hip hop artist, he normally his music's super positive as well. But I was like, hey man, remember how you said we should write a real sad song? <laughs> I was like, here's the beat, and he says he goes, oh yeah, that's the one. So he's like, I'll have you something in the morning. And I woke up at eight o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and in my thing was like, rainy nights without you, and that was just the title of the track. I was like, or it was called Sick of All These Rainy Nights, and. Sure enough, Pudge just comes and just slays the whole. And, the, and, and <laughs> That's awesome. He writes a you know verse, chorus, and like the beat even itself really wasn't so wasn't like super structured, like sixteen bars, you know he you know twelve, sixteen, you know as you would have hip hop, yeah. but he just went perfect with it somehow. And we've performed it live a couple of times, and it's always fun in the middle of my really energetic, happy sets to have him come on and just do that track real quick did it adds just, a new flavor did he just release something real recently yeah yeah yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Saw, I, saw, I saw it on the social media he's put out a ton of stuff I saw man. it on the social like, media oh, here's my b-side with 21 new tracks That's you know wild. my album with 20 of this but he's just a machine man he mix masters produces everything man. um at his at his home studio yeah. does it all i mean vinyl awesome. this vinyl flips this everything you know um just a and a very good uh, lyricist as well. His, oh, I know yeah, what so I've what I listened fun. to. I think it might have just been his promo video or yeah. something like that. And I was like, dude, it's a spitter. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's great, man. He, like, um, yeah. y- you know, his his shows are always always fun to go to. But man, um, so like like I said, how I described y'all sound to Jake was this like hillbilly hippie, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, funk, and because that's how I felt, man. And so it's it's. That's what's so great about the music is that you've got all of these different genres that are seamlessly blending together, and there's so many people who can be like, 
who can find the peace Thank that they like. Thank you so much. You know, Thank you so much. Peace I feel there. like that's. You know? I feel like we have a little bit of something for everybody. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and that's what I was saying. You know, especially you know in the second song, it's a completely different feel than the first one. Completely, completely different, different. You know, so it, it, that's what's awesome is you could walk in and you could hear. You could hear the end of one song and then the beginning of another, leave the room, and then come back and hear the newest song. And you'd be like, is this in the same band? It could completely it's... change yeah. your mind a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but and that, so that's, that's what's kinda, fun about it, man. And lessons ended up that way. Our EP, it's on Spotify, YouTube, yeah. Amazon, Google Music, <laughs> all those fun all places. Um, yeah, that's how it, that's how Addy is. And we really, we wanted to pick five different tracks that we felt like gave you the broadest range of, of what we could do, mm -hmm. which maybe sometimes people don't think of tracks like that when they're putting together an album or yeah, something, right? Sure. We wanted it to be a you know rock and roll song and a, you know reggae vibe, mm -hmm. you know sublime song and our bluegrass lick through the one. darkness, yeah. you know, yeah, you yeah. know, and I feel like you get a little bit of all of that, mm -hmm. you know, and. and yeah, man, if, and if you're shopping that around, you know, especially, you know, if you go to a venue and you play and a promoter or somebody who works at that venue hears all these different sounds, you know, and, and, you know, I've always gone as far as like the science of the person who's working. You know, if you go to a venue and let's say there's a bartender, if that bartender is enjoying it, you know, especially if you're playing at more of a, lo a local spot, you're not down at Gas Monkey Live or something, you know, where mm -hmm. they're open from 8 to 2, 2 a.m., you <laughs> know, Friday and Saturday. But if you're playing at some, like, you know, when I worked at LSA, you know, if, you know, if a band like yourself came and played, I know that I'm first off going to have a great time because the guests are going to have a great time. And there's all these different sounds. There's something for everybody. It's going to keep more people there. It's, it is a, like, if I feel like as a promoter, as a venue owner, if you hear a band that can play all this different stuff, that's positive. You know, that's something that you want. Cause you're like, oh man, you know, you know, people might be like, ah, oh, it's country tonight. And then it's like, wait, no, it's Mason Adams project. There's all different types of sounds Thanks, that I can man. go in there and listen Thank to. You. Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's, that's why I think that's a, a good call. That's you awesome. know, Thanks, some people man. make concept <laughs> albums and that's cool. You know, I've made concept albums myself, but then to kind of, you guys just kind of, you almost made a greatest hits already. Hey, <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, Which, and at the time it the was best of what we've got at yeah. the time. Yeah, exactly. it, those were our greatest yeah, hits. Yeah. And now, I mean, I, you know, uh, you know, well, I mean, for Old Red River, that's one of our most recent ones. We've been playing that out. You can find and, that uh, one on um, uh, DeepLMArtCo.com. Yeah, if you go, I think if you go to ArtCo's YouTube page, okay, they've got it. I think you could probably catch a video of that one. But Gotta love those but people. We're probably gonna, we, uh, yeah. we might record that one. Yeah. Um, and it's just been a good tune, and it's 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 so crazy because it's so new and it's. It's everybody had parts in. This is how we want to play it. Mm -hmm. This is how this should go. We should do this yeah. here. And so, yeah. I mean, even these guys are like, that's our best song right now. You know, <laughs> like, ah, you know, yeah. you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it, what's cool is that everybody in the band has their own favorite songs. Yeah. You know, and that's so cool. That's what's great about it. Yeah, so for cool. sure, man. Yeah. You know, that's, that's awesome. I always found that too is sometimes you'll be like, hey, listen to the album and then nobody has your favorite song everybody else has another one everybody connects with it differently uh -huh, or, right. you know even if you're in you know if you're in the band you know especially too you're gonna be like well i like this one because i love the lick that i get to play at yep. that spot i like the emotion that it gives me and the right. way it makes everybody else feel and the way it provides that extra sound in the in the song super cool yeah man that's that's awesome fellas i can't believe how quickly 45 minutes 50 minutes just flew by really that was insane that right. is insane. That is insane. <laughs> it goes uh, it goes by fast here, man. Um, before y'all go, is there anything else that we want to plug real quick? And, uh, just you know, make sure to check out the Facebook. We're always doing the events and updating that. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to have MasonAdamsProject.com is going to be finished um, uh, maybe within a week or something. Nice. So be on well, the lookout cool. for that. Um, we've got some cool, fresh pictures on there. And, um, if you want to stay up to date, you can check us out on Instagram section. and Facebook. Nice. Instagram, yeah. So um, we are planning on installing a lot of new material and doing some recording in the spring. Uh, we've already got some summer shows booked. Eight Air Saloon down in Dallas. Come nice. hang out with us down at Eight Air. Six Springs um, and Richardson. But we're planning Very on cool. having a pretty busy fall. That's so what I like to that's hear, That's what man. we're pumping I know, that's when for. the music season comes yeah. around. Man. I'm excited yeah. for it. I'm excited and we're going to come it. to Denton. Yes. What up, Denton? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, oh, you man. didn't. Oh, man. Thank you all so much Thank again you. for coming Thank on, man. Thank you so it's much been for great having a conversation with you all tonight. Once again, you all, the Mason Adams Project. Take Check them out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Google. Google, iTunes, 
anywhere that you wherever can listen you listen to music. music yeah yeah make it. sure you go follow him right here catch him on a show that's coming up mm. in the spring y'all and uh that's that's probably gonna you know map I, mason see. adams project yeah yeah exactly so once again y'all thank you so much for tuning in to denton radio.com Hi, on sound Love dice you. tonight <laughs> y'all make sure you stay tuned for ellie bell in the denton vibe up next right here on denton radio.com peace, peace. Well, thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the show. We want to thank our partners and sponsors who made this show possible. And now stick around for a word from all of us here at Discover Denton. Do you love live music? If so, make Denton, Texas your next vacation. Find more information at discoverdenton.com.